Tim, you went to the Harvard Divinity School, so talk about why you did that and the importance of spirituality in all of this. I made that decision a little before I, I went to prison that that I needed to go to divinity school. And and that had grown out of my time in between when I disrupted the auction and when I got incarcerated, where I was pretty much a full-time climate activist in those years. And, and I was seeing that the challenge of the climate movement was shifting and that it was going beyond just the job of reducing emissions to increasingly moving towards the job of figuring out how we can maintain our humanity as we navigate this period of chaotic change that is now largely inevitable. And and so looking around the climate movement, I realized that we didn't have any of the tools and skills to even begin that conversation of how we hold on to our humanity in, in desperate times, how we hold on to our values in a seemingly hopeless situation. But it seemed to me that religious traditions did have a set of tools and skills for that because that's what people have often turned to religious communities for. And so I was certainly thinking in that direction. And then sort of the galvanizing moment for me was in my trial, in the jury selection process, the judge and the prosecutor found out that about three quarters of the jury poll had received a pamphlet before they walked in to the courthouse on the first day from the Fully Informed Jurors Association. And it was a pamphlet that didn't say anything about my case, but it talked about jury rights and why we have juries. Now, juries are meant to be the conscience of the community to protect their fellow citizens from the government. And when they found that out, the prosecution just lost their minds. And we had to have a meeting in the judge's chamber where the prosecution was asking for a mistrial to get rid of the entire jury pool. And he was almost spitting when he was reading from this pamphlet saying, this notion of voting your conscience is out in space. And and rather than declare a mistrial, the judge called each of the potential jurors one at a time into his chambers with me and my legal team on one side and the prosecution on the other. And the judge at the head of the table kind of speaking down to this potential juror in, a, in his patriarchal kind of way. And he said, you need to understand that it's not your job to decide what's right or wrong. Your job is to listen to what the law says, and you have to enforce it, even if you think it's morally wrong. Can you do that? Can you do what I ask you to do, even if you think it's morally wrong? And, and I was sitting in the seat closest to the juror, and, and I watched one person after another say, yes, your honor, I'll do whatever you ask me to do, even if I think it's morally wrong. And I could tell that they meant it. You know, they were, they were out of their element. They had all of this authority kind of bearing down on them. And they just accepted this idea that, um, that it wasn't their job to decide what's right or wrong. And, and they were just following orders from this authority. And, and at that moment, I understood better than I ever had before how some of the great atrocities in history could happen, how something like a Holocaust or a genocide could happen when an entire citizenry is willing to let go of their own moral authority and abandon their own conscience. And, and yet at the same time, I saw this prosecutor who was the United States attorney. He, he had the full power of the United States government behind him. And he was freaking out at the notion of citizens using their conscience when they're exercising their civic duties. He was absolutely terrified. And so I saw this, this huge power hinging on our faith in our own moral authority and, and our faith in our conscience, where if we abandoned our conscience, that any atrocity could be possible. But when we had faith in, the moral, in our own moral authority and the shared moral authority of our community, that there is no power structure in the world that, that can't be impacted by that. And I realized that that was really a spiritual struggle over, over whether or not we hold on to that faith in our conscience and in our moral authority. And, and that's a spiritual struggle that is actively being waged in our society that is encouraging people to, to be obedient to these power structures and, and to disregard their own conscience. And, and that if we truly wanted to resist that, we had to be able to engage in that struggle in a spiritual way and, and be able to, to fight back for that faith in our shared moral authority.